So the first step in making these Halifax style Donair is to make the pita bread. And you obviously could use purchased pita bread if you want, but it's uh, really good homemade. So for this, I am using Brian Langerstrom's re recipe and I'll have it uh, in the description. So it's basically 350 grams of flour and today I'm doing it in a food processor. I've also done it in a stand mixer in other videos, works well. So 350 grams of flour, we've got eight grams, so two teaspoons of sugar, five grams or one teaspoon of salt, and two teaspoons or about eight grams of yeast. Actually, that's about seven grams. So we'll just get this in here, give it a pulse to mix it up. And here I've got warm lager beer and it's about seven eighths of a cup. So put this on and just stream it in the top. We'll do this till it rides the blade. Now we'll just pulse it a few times. together pretty well. Just gonna turn this out. Be very careful with these blades. We'll just give this a little bit of a knead to bring it together. Okay, I've kneaded it by hand for about three minutes. You can see it's getting reasonably smooth. Um, so now what I'm going to do is basically roll that out a little bit just so I can cut it into four equal balls. We'll cover these, put them in a warm place, and let them rise. So now it's time to make the Donair meat mix itself. So in here I've got a pound of lean ground beef. Now this recipe really needs some fat, so medium would be better. And uh, because of that I'm just going to throw in about a tablespoon of neutral oil just to give it a bit more fat. And then in this we'll put throw in a teaspoon of salt. Here I've got some oregano. It, um, I've actually put this in a mortar. It's a teaspoon of oregano, which I've put through a mortar and pestle just to break it up a little bit. We'll put in half a teaspoon of garlic powder. half a teaspoon of onion powder. Italian seasoning, about half a teaspoon of that as well. Quarter teaspoon of cayenne, just to give it a bit of zip. I'm gonna throw in a quarter teaspoon of cumin as well, the depth. Finally, about half a teaspoon of black pepper. So different recipes on the internet, uh, some have you mix it by hand, some have you do it in a stand mixer. I'm doing it in a food processor because I actually want to get sort of a very um, pureed texture with this. So I'm just going to keep pulsing it until it incorporates. Okay, so that looks good. Now we'll turn it out and shape it. So here we have two sheets of tin foil and also a sheet of parchment paper that I have greased. I am gonna do this um, sort of in a log, wrap it up and put it on the barbecue to cook because it is summer here and uh, I just don't feel like heating up the kitchen. So what we'll do is just transfer this meat mixture The goal is to get it fairly uniform so it cooks evenly. We'll be cooking it right through. We want it tall enough so that you can actually get strips off of it when it's done. Okay, so it looks 
pretty good. Back with clean hands. And I'm just going to wrap this up. Now this is good to just go on the barbecue. I cook it at about 350 degrees, uh, probably for about an hour or so. We'll check it and see how it's doing. Okay, for garnish for this, we've got um, half a white onion and a tomato, which we're just going to chop. There are onions and tomatoes there. Okay, so now it's time to roll out the dough. These have been proofing now probably for about 45 minutes. 15-20 um, minutes is fine, but the longer the better. So they feel very good. Just gonna throw a little bit of flour down and roll them out. I'm gonna roll, try the, roll these ones out to nine, maybe even ten inches. I'm gonna try to do them thin. Okay, now we're gonna go cook this on the barbecue as well. Here we are. Here is the last pita. And here is a gratuitous Vancouver shot. Okay, so the meat's been just cooking for about 45 minutes or so. I just checked it with the thermometer, it's done. Uh, now what I'm gonna do is actually Put, um, put it back on the grill just to sort of uh, get a little finish to it. So I'm just going to throw this onto the barbecue just to brown the outside. So the central aspect of a Halifax Bonaire is the sauce. So this here, uh, my friend Pascal at La Belle Patate here in Vancouver made and um, gave me some. And that's actually why I'm making these Bonaires. I'll link to some recipes down below. Basically, it you can either use sweetened condensed milk or evaporated milk and sugar uh, with some garlic powder and also some vinegar. And that's the basis of all these sweet sauces. And if you're using sweetened condensed milk, you would use less sugar. If you're using evaporated milk, you'd use uh, more sugar, but there's a fair bit of sugar in this sauce. And this is what really give, makes the donaire a donaire. So I'm gonna use this one for this particular donaire, but I will on a subsequent um, video actually make my own as well and give it a shot. Okay, so let's make this sandwich. You can see I browned the meat just a little bit on the outside on the grill. Now I'm going to cut it thinly. You could also um, take the meat and um, throw it in a fry pan once you slice it if you want. This is fresh, so I'm not going to, but that's how I'm going to reheat it. So cutting very thin slices. The texture of the meat looks great.
So I've got the pita, I opened the pita, I could also do it closed. I'm gonna take some of this meat, put it in here. And we will take some of the tomatoes and onions. You can see here I've got a little more onion than tomato. Probably could change that ratio up a little bit. And some of the sauce. this up and give it a roll. And there we have it. Halifax Donair. Let's give this a shot. Very simple with the onion and tomato. The sweet sauce really comes through and the meat tastes uh, great. I think for the next one, I'll put on a little more meat, but that certainly uh, is a winner. So thank you very much for joining. Hope you give it a shot and also hope you subscribe to the channel. We'll see you again.